we were doing everything ourselves too. So we were managing the website, we were managing customer service, we were packing out the orders ourselves. We like were going to t shirt mart, didn't work there, but would get on the Pressing. press and be like, this guy Jim that we somehow made friends with who's yeah. the manager. We were like, Jim, I need to use the machine right now. And we were pressing these things in between like lunch breaks, getting them back over, shipping them out. And if they couldn't do it in time, we would go to the t shirt shop and just be like, Jim, can we please get on the machines? And we would be pressing them ourselves. Yeah, and then COVID hit and it was like we never stopped working. I'm Tom Ward, and over the last couple years, I've had the chance to sit down with some of the biggest celebrities and influencers influencers in the world. What I've always found most fascinating is the stories of the businesses that they've built behind the scenes. On this show, you'll get an inside look of what it takes to build a successful business from some of the biggest celebrities, business people, and up and coming entrepreneurs in the world. This is The Tom Ward Show. Hey guys, welcome to The Tom Ward Show where we talk to the biggest entrepreneurs in the world. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. We do new interviews every Tuesday at 10 a.m. And today, I'm um, welcome at your house here. I'm sitting here with Tori Robinson and Leo O'Malley, founders of Boys Lie, which is a funny name. And I want to tell you that all boys don't lie. <laughs> you know, I'm a decent one. There's some decent ones out there. But I wanted to find out how you guys connected because you're both from, I read the story, you're both from kind of the main line. If you're not from the Philly area, that's outside of Philly, a suburb. And you grew up close to each other. You went to different schools, hung out with different people, but now all of a sudden you're business partners and really good friends. <laughs> so how did you reconnect? Yeah, um, well, yes, we grew up literally right down the street from each other um, in Wayne, Pennsylvania. I could probably walk to her house if I wanted to. Um, and we hung out within the same crowds in high school, but we were never like best, best friends. Um, in college, her boyfriend at the time was best friends with my boyfriend. And so they went to the same school the same as school. I did. So Leah did would, they grow up in the same town? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so okay. Leah would go out and visit and we would hang out and essentially we became best friends and dumped them. Yeah, so we just continued our friendship. I remember she invited me over, um, I think it was for my 21st birthday. Yeah. Um, and she had champagne and we like celebrated and then that whole summer, we spent the entire summer together. It was a great summer. It was summer. a great summer. Um, and we just like became best friends. And were you back east or were you here in LA at the time? Back east. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then after after college, she was at Yelp and I was in I was moving out to San Diego and I was working for a private label manufacturer. And I went to New York and it was St. Patrick's Day, I think. Yeah. And we were wasted, like out of our mind. <laughs> and we're in a fire station and we keep screaming, boys lie, boys lie, boys lie. And it was kind of always something that when we were going through breakups, whether that be friends, uh, boyfriends, best friends, bosses, anything yeah. like that, we would always exchange those words. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like an inside joke, but to build each other up. So boys lie essentially doesn't actually mean boys lie. Yeah, yeah. It really like means boys. like taking that energy and like that healing process and putting it towards something else. Something positive. Yeah. yeah. It was empowering for us to say it. And it almost say it like going out at night. <laughs> Yeah, it became like our mantra, our essentially. Mantra. So we get drunk, we're in this fire station in New York, and essentially we're screaming this, and we're like, why don't we do something with this? Why don't we... Because like, everyone would say this name is so catchy, we love this, like, just this phrase, boys lie. So I was kind of looking at some sayings you had, like you were saying, boys lie, revenge body, you know, which I thought was funny. You had all these kind of mantras, but the one I liked most was, and that's why I took out my notes, I never look at these, but... Boys follow what they see, girls follow what they hear, and that's why girls wear makeup and boys lie. Mm -hmm. So we initially How did that come? I mean, that's a dope statement. So we initially started as a makeup brand and we failed miserably. Okay. Like, it was actually one of the best learning lessons we both could have had because in school, it's like you get by school, you can get good grades, but nobody really teaches you how to lose. Like nobody teaches you how to fail at all. We or what to do after you fail. Yeah. So essentially we thought that line was very catchy. I forget where we had heard it from, but we were like, let's pick this up and use this yeah and it kind of let's, just became a thing that we were like, it. let's put it in our bio this mm -hmm. works yeah and so while the makeup didn't stick um the phrase kind of just did and it still works yeah. today and Dur you're i'm sorry. Oh, sorry your family has background in the cosmetics industry right yeah. your dad is in the cosmetic manufacturing correct so when we went to go or when i went to move out to san diego essentially um i was helping the family business learning about the ins and outs of producing cosmetics. And that's why we started in makeup. Cause I was like, oh, since Makes I'm sense. learning this, yeah. let's start boys lie in makeup. But the thing is, is with cosmetics, if she's wearing pink lipstick, I don't really need to ask her what brand she's wearing. I can just go to CVS and buy pink lipstick. Mm -hmm. So we were like, let's have two merch pieces, like these hoodies that I just randomly designed and 
Um, Delilah Bell and Ming Lee Simmons reached out to us and they were like, we want these, we need these. So we were two months from shutting out like our entire store. We were like, we can't. Oh, do you had anymore. a physical store? No, like online. Shutting down business. Just, oh, online. Yeah. Just we were like, we're failing. We're not doing anything. We're not being like, we're not making this work. Um, so they reach out. We're like sending out all these gifts essentially or seating um, just of what was left of our inventory. Mm -hmm. And I wake up one morning and I'm looking at like Gigi Hadid updates because I'm a huge Gigi <laughs> fan. And she's full like head to toe in yeah. our outfit, walks out in New York. Um, it's right when she broke up with Tyler Cameron. Mm -hmm. And the entire thing just went viral. And it was like, this is pre-COVID also. Wow. So we were like, oh my God, mm -hmm. freaking out. All of a sudden like our sales pick up. Lee and I are working two jobs between doing sales um, for the private label manufacturer and doing Boys Live. Boys Live. And pack, we were doing everything ourselves too. So we were managing the website. We were managing customer service. We were packing out the orders ourselves. We like were going to T-Shirt Mart. Didn't work there, but would get on the Pressing. press and be like, this guy, Jim, that we somehow made friends with, who's yeah. the manager. We were like, Jim, I need to use the machine right now. And we were pressing these things in between like lunch breaks, getting them back over, shipping them out. And if they couldn't do it in time, we would go to the T-Shirt shop and just be like, Jim, can we please get on the machines? And we would be pressing them ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, and then COVID hit and it was like, we never stopped working. Well, before you fail, right, <laughs> in the beginning of the business, did you have like a formal business plan or did you kind of go, ah, let's do makeup because I know makeup. Did your dad help you kind of set up the business and say, these are some things to look for. This is how you should structure it. No. And how did you get funding? Like, what did you start with? We really, we borrowed um, like 250K that we kind of used over time, mm -hmm. um, but we blew it really quickly yeah. and basically <laughs> in the initial process of the business plan it was it was really hard like I didn't I was from my or I went I came from ASU mm -hmm. like as a student I was supposed to be a business major I switched to creative writing because school got in the way of college um, <laughs> ASU is a fun school it, it is it's I lived like, in Scottsdale yeah so. Harvard of the West yeah. great time so I have this amazing time and essentially then I'm supposed to be writing out this business plan when i been reading reading poetry for four years of yeah. school so I was like Fuck. um but I had a really good mentor at the time her name was Carol Neary or yeah Carol Neary and she had started this uh private label manufacturer that we purchased and she was still running it so she was able to help me navigate this business plan essentially and then from there we kind of just came up with different ideas and concepts of how to grow yeah but I remember it was difficult in the beginning too because I was still in New York working at Yelp and I was a sales rep there selling ads and so it took a while for me to actually get out here it took like a, maybe four or five months because I had to I'd quit say, and then yeah. pack up and come out here so we were kind of just like I was really thrown into it with her and um, it was a huge learning experience for me too because I had never worked in the cosmetic industry and I had no background in that I'm a communications major <laughs> I went to Boulder so yeah. <laughs> it was like we learned so much in the first year um, and also taught each other a lot along the way, but it was not easy at yeah. all. It was and, really hard. And picking out even the components for the cosmetic line, she was still at Yelp again, and we uh, we went to Hong Kong, we went to Cosmoprof. Oh, and wow. We're, we land in Hong Kong, and unfortunately, my grandma passed away. Oh. And I was like bedridden because my grandma and I were super, super close. And at that time, I'm like, Leah, I might have to go home. These are all the things that you need to start asking. So like, like sitting in bed with her and I'm like, give me every single, no I'm like writing I'm like, notes like I'm in This school. is the I'm size like, of the boat. This is the size of what you need to fill. Like yeah. this is, I'm like, okay, I'm so nervous, but I'm ready. I'll stay yeah. here in Hong Kong for the next week by myself and I'll do it. But she ended up. Because she's got the, she's got the makeup expertise. Like yeah. she grew yeah, up so in that business. Like, so she knows so this. She's still teaching me like, okay, you need this to is... ask this. This is what we're looking for. This is the size. This is the barrel size of the lipstick that we're yeah. looking for. And I'm learning all yeah, of this. all this stuff. As yeah. she's going through a horrible time and it was really difficult. I think the key to even us succeeding in close Clothing is having that manufacturing background and knowing how something's made because it really makes you think down to the single-handed like screw of what it is like how do I make this piece um, so yeah. I think that's been a huge part of our success too is having that mindset did you like how did you pick manufacturers in the beginning did you make some mistakes along the way like we definitely were you made good mistakes. at it yeah. um, but we had a good group of friends who recommended us um, to a manufacturer out here in Compton and we made close friends with them and they produce for huge companies like Costco, Walmart, oh, like wow. gigantic. So for them to produce like 100 units was a really big favor. Um, 
And then we just grew the account yeah. and they grew with us. And you started 100 units. That's what you started with. Yeah, Essentially, we, yeah. We went in there and we we're like, we were talking to the guy and I won't, I don't know if I'll, I'll say his name, but he's great. We still work, work with him today. And we're like, we are just starting. We are super small. This is the amount of units that we need to make. I really hope that you trust and believe in us because we will grow. We know we will grow. And, and we're like, we'll be here every day. We'll be so here we are every also day. commuting from San Diego to Compton like every day. But he believed, wow. he believed in us and he believed in the brand and he kind of did us a favor by doing these really small quantities of units and giving, still giving us a, a good price. And so thankful, we're really thankful to him. And yeah. So you start with 250. You blow a bunch of it on this makeup thing, right? How much are you left with and does panic set in? <laughs> um, right? Because you, because you, I mean, you sound optimistic now because obviously the brand did well and you're successful now. I think we're always going to be panicking just because our experience of trusting the wrong people in LA, like when we were like, oh, we have a marketing budget, we have all these things. Everyone in LA just saw dollar signs and was like, oh, we can spend their money. Oh, we can do this. We 100%. Can do this. And we got really taken advantage of. And in that, it was kind of like we blew the budget. We were under panic and pressure because the money that we borrowed had been spent. And we were like, where do we go from here? We don't even know what to do. Are, is she going to go back to Yelp? Am I going to still be a salesperson? Yeah, we had Yeah, we had really no idea. And we kind of, in that two month period, at one point, there was just so much pressure that we, kind of surrendered to it all and we we're like you know what we've put our all in this fuck it if it works fuck it if it doesn't like we yeah. started laughing when things started going wrong because so we're like whatever like, <laughs> what else what can we happen? do screw this but we were also in a really interesting situation because that whole year of the makeup failing i think it was in october or november is when it started the clothing started to blow up so we are towards the end of the year we started making a lot of money so i think people started believing in us a little mm. bit more that we could grow but it happened towards the end of the year. So that first year was pretty shitty for us. And but it, was, it continued to take off. It was hard. I think people don't realize either that when you start a business, nobody's going to be on your cheerleading team. Like even your friends who say, oh yeah, I'll support the business. Like, no, they won't. And yeah. I think that that's something to be said too by just because your friends don't believe in you, even sometimes family members, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you can't succeed. Like the world is of abundance. People get... If you get 100 people in a room, right, and you're speaking and they're paying attention to what you're doing, that's amazing. 100 percent. 100 followers is still a lot of people. That you don't you're... need millions of followers. I say this all the time. No. You need a small but dedicated group. Exactly. And yeah. the people that are passionate about you and will consume all your content, buy yeah. whatever you're selling, who really believe in And you. I think a lot of people, too, who get suckered into influencer collaborations, you can have 15 million followers, but it doesn't mean you have buying power. Nope. So that's another thing we too. Is we say you're an influencer, but what are you really influencing? Yeah. You know, at the end of the day. Do you have an engaged community yeah. is what it's yeah. all about. We talked about Emma Chamberlain before. Right. Yeah. She's the perfect influencer, oh, right? Because yeah. she has her, the following. Her return is insane. And like, the, they're passionate. Yeah. And, and they, if you have 15,000 followers and your engagement rate is extremely high and you know that they're going to have a huge like return on investment for your business, I'd rather pick that influencer to give a gift to in hopes that she would wear it compared to someone who has a million followers and no one gives a about what they're doing yep i mean i think the best thing that we did too in the initial pro process of this is we picked out all these memes that we absolutely loved and we were like why don't we just start using this and creating a mood board and you know it's just a boys lie account with memes people love that and that's kind of what really yeah that's i think really? the really interesting part so when we were makeup and we hadn't launched yet our Instagram solely was a mood board, like she said, like memes about heartbreak and things. <laughs> if we you want to take the Pinterest, time to scroll, scroll all the way down, down. Yeah, you'll see the mood board. And so it's we kind of... built, sorry, I didn't yeah, no, no, but no. we built this following of girls and, and guys who were just following because they liked what we were posting and it was relatable. So mm -hmm. we started building this organic following that we knew would also resonate with our like brand DNA and like who we were really trying to target as like our consumer base. Mm -hmm. So organically, we kind of built that without really knowing what we were doing. When we had the business yeah. plan, we didn't have a marketing like idea of this is how exactly we want the Instagram to look to look like. We kind of just fell into it. And I think the same way about networking, actually. Mm -hmm. Like I went to ASU, so I was lucky enough where I could go to LA, I could go to Vegas. So in my freshman year of college, I was like, let's go to Coachella. And I met yeah. all these great people. But in that process of meeting those people, my mindset wasn't like, I'm networking right now. These are great people. No, I'm going right. to use them for my business fun. one day. Yeah. I'm just having a great time with them. And it, we built like such strong relationships that I was lucky enough that when we did want to do more clothing aspects, people were like, yeah, we'll wear it, whatever, we'll post. Yeah. But it wasn't mm -hmm. like, 
It wasn't planned it was out. It, it wasn't was a marketing organic. plan. I think people paper. think you have to have a business plan and you have to have networking and yeah. you have to have all these things, but that's not true. Like, honestly, the best thing you can do for yourself is just to be likable and to be kind. And mm -hmm. it's so hard sometimes for people to just do that. hundred yeah. percent. I think the nights, I think when we also first moved out here, we used to go out a lot more because we'd be like, you know, there's going to be these people there. Like we really need to, mm -hmm. then we started thinking in, in the networking mindset. So like we need to network. But then when you're sometimes, at least for me, when I'm in that mindset of like, this is business only. And I don't feel like I'm truly being myself. I feel more closed off. And yeah. I think that when you're going out with an intention to just, have Introduce fun. yourself, have fun. Yeah. You will build those, those organic relationships regardless if you're just being yourself. But it, you still have to always have that business mentality, but you can't... Um, you have to have the mindset, out. too, of like being like, is this going to ruin my reputation? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, like, absolutely. while you're out with them. But, Be careful what events you go yeah, to. Yeah, like, I could in no ways have a political career by any chance right now. But, yeah. I mean... <laughs> With the rep or with the not reputation, with the relationships I built from school, I can definitely say at least like we still use those relationships today. Yeah. When you become comfortable, you become also more comfortable to talk about the business aspect of what you're really yeah. trying to talk about with that person without being too like. And eventually, honestly, you get so sick of talking about it. Like there are moments too <laughs> where we'll be at birthday parties for friends yeah. or we'll be at family functions together, and they'll be like, "So how's Boys Live?" Blah blah blah. Like all these things about Boys Live, and I'm like. I pitch all the time. I do this every day. I cannot take this anymore. And it's also like, this is somebody's birthday. Yeah. Like, let's it's not celebrate. About me. Yeah, let's celebrate them and what Sometimes they're doing. I feel bad, even and when I go home with my family and. Like, do you take the attention right out of the room? I don't want to, but I feel like I'm there, and my aunts and uncles are asking like, "How's boys I?" and asking all these questions. I almost, I always like want to be like Kara, so she's doing this right yeah. now. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, I don't want this to solely be about you don't want to overshadow yeah. other people yeah. who are doing interesting Sometimes things it gets I'm awkward sure. with family and it's hard because we already eat sleep and like breathe, breathe it. i mean obviously yes. <laughs> even this house Welcome. it's literally like eat sleep wake up boys lie boys lie boys lie boys lie so when you do get that break or that mental pause you're like wow this is actually really relieving that i can have a moment with my friends with my family that it's not really about this and it's so weird because Four years ago, I mean, we're so grateful in the position that we're in, but four years ago, I'd be like, no, boys like this, boys like yeah. this. Boys That's like a waste this. of time. Yeah. yeah. Right. How do you, I mean, what do you do now? Because I think you're at the stage where you're realizing, actually, that stuff's important. It's mm -hmm. not a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Connecting, mm -hmm. decompressing and stuff. Like, you, you were telling me your schedule, you know, before this and how... You're waking up in the middle of the night and thinking, you know, boys lie, but yeah. how do you unplug and you're world social too. Like you got to be on Instagram. You got to be doing all these things. I are, do think, you, are you good at it or is that I hard? think you find your own balance within what you're doing and that takes practice and I'm still practicing. Um, so there are days especially where, again, I wake up at one or two in the morning and I'll be like, I need to get on my computer. Oh my God, I need to do this, this and this. And then there are moments too where I'm like, I was on the airplane and, oh, we were talking and this the other day. I opened up my email and I was gone um, for a week and in between I answered like the emails that I could, but I had 450 emails <laughs> and I opened up my email and I was like, you know what, just not right now. And I like immediately I'm like, I'm going to put on a movie and just, you know, try yeah. and decompress for a second. But I mean, you watch reality TV. It gets... That's what I do to kind of, I, you know, it's you got to do things that. or listening to a podcast where you listen to other people dish the sh or give each other because it kind of takes you out of the consistent thinking about the brand. I mean, I took PTO with my family. I went to Maine in July and I actually didn't work the whole time. And that was the first time I did not sit at my laptop or check. And I had anxiety in the beginning, um, just thinking about yeah, like all the things I need to do and like what I'm missing out on. But towards the end, I'm like, I really, I really did need that. And I needed to just disconnect and unplug. But then it's hard because I still think The worst is when you it. go on vacation also. I went on vacation uh, last January for like a week and a half with my family. And by the end of the vacation, I was like, I want to work. I need to work. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. 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 I'm like, I'm like starting to get the twitch again. Like, <laughs> My email must be checked. Yeah. I think it just depends like on what, I don't know, what yeah. range that you're in in your own emotions. But... I will say, um, we both started doing hot eight or hot yoga, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like hot yoga with cardio. It's hmm. really hard. Yeah, it's really no. hard. But something I do like is that it puts your body under pressure, and you have to learn how to breathe through that. And I think for me, starting off your day that way, where you have some sort of relief, has been essential to even me coming in here and having a positive attitude and are like continuing to succeed. Yeah. It's really good. It's really, I, I mean, think working I out's up, really important. I wake yeah, up grumpy. So yeah. doing 
yoga in the morning really just helps me because yeah and I'm not even saying like you have to work out every day you have to no, diet no. you have to do all these things because honestly like I, I don't eat that great yeah but it is something that just gives you like a physical release not just the mental one talk, talk about um how involved in the business you're in because kind of just looking at your Instagram and stuff like that and looking at it, it looks like, hey, perfect life, successful brand, Forbes 30 under 30. Yeah. Like they're probably on cruise control by now. But you were telling me before this, what you spent your days doing and kind of what you're doing in the middle of the night. Talk about like how involved you are and you're not checked out. You're not just. No, I think in the beginning we were able to be this digitally native. So like having this such strong, and we still do intimate relationship with our like audience in yeah. general like it would be lee and i dming back and forth like in the boys light instagram and reaching out to all these people and i think now it's kind of like i well, don't know we we it's were hard. lucky enough to have a team of people but at the same time our um, attention has to go to different areas of the business at all, at every single moment of the day but it's also you know in the beginning when we were doing every single thing ourselves we learned so much and so now we always say we would never have somebody do something that we've never done. I hear that all the time when, from people I interview. Right. I hear that all, over and over. Because how can you understand where they're coming from if they're struggling if you've never actually done it yourself? Yeah. And so um, even learning little things like that or doing data entry that's kind of just, <laughs> you're sitting there like a robot entering in all these part numbers or entering in all these sales orders, it really does make you understand that it's not easy and- um, Everything is connected and even though again, we are the faces of the brand, it's so hard to kind of balance between that and the back end of things yeah. and the non sexy part yeah, of the job. Exactly. And the data the whole, entry. But the non, non sexy. Yeah, the yeah, non, of course, yeah. The non sexy part of the job is the most important part. <laughs> yeah. Like yep. you have to have Posting on Instagram is fun. No, Getting yeah. a bunch of likes and right. people love you, that's fun. Yeah, but it's also after you do all the non sexy stuff yeah. and then having to get on camera and be like, Hey guys, yeah. how are you? Oh, yeah, this is Mary right. Kate and Ashley here. <laughs> like it's it's really We're like just crying twenty minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. We're like, Hey guys, we're launching a new collection today. Right? Yeah. It's it's really difficult and I think that that's something unfortunately people don't get to see as much of Lee and I is no. the back end of the things that we're doing. Because and honestly, who wants to see that? You know, here I'm I'm live on Instagram and I'm doing data entry. Yeah, it's like, like yeah. zero viewers. It's also <laughs> like you guys want to see what I do on a daily this basis. This is what I do. If yeah. you literally put a camera on my computer screen, <laughs> it's it's insane. Like what's interesting that you bring that up too. We actually did get approached to do a reality show at one point, um, just because someone stepped into the hat. We live. We used to live. Um, in a different home office mm -hmm. um, and the person that stepped in he, he was like we, you know seeing all of our employees and seeing the way that, that we interact he's like why aren't you guys doing this and we're like will people really want to see the day-to-day -day, or do they want to see drama that's not really as existent as they would assume it would be I don't know so and drama you, we don't want in our that business we don't, yeah. yeah you sign your soul to the, the devil yeah you that's so. you sell it to the you devil sell it. Yeah. 100%. Both. you sign yeah, the contract both. yeah but we didn't want to do it I talk about I think what I hear over and over again from entrepreneurs is always almost always we started out we thought this was the way to go we were wrong we failed we pivoted to this that failed and we pivoted this. It sounds like you had one pivot from going from makeup to kind of apparel, which turned out mm -hmm. well. But talk about the pivoting kind of mindset and kind of having to almost accept failure in some regard, but also remain positive about the next step and mm -hmm. believing in that. I think is that tough I psychologically? Think, well, I think the one thing that we're really lucky is that no matter where we were in our business, whether we were about to be out of jobs or whether we are at our best month in sales yet, we've always fully wholeheartedly believed in the brand. Like if we are failing right now, which we're not, I still believe in this brand. And I think we both deal to like the day we die. So having that mindset of- If there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. And it's more so like, okay, you can keep pushing me down, keep pushing me down, keep pushing me down. But if I can get up once, if I can get up twice, if I can get up three times, then I know that I can get up by like the fifth or sixth time and learn how to battle it out myself. Yeah. So I think it's kind of, we're lucky. Where do you get that confidence from? I think a it's lot of more people like, get beat down a couple times and it's game over. Leah and I have a really rare relationship where I wouldn't recommend to anybody working with your best friend, but with us, it's almost it's such a strong sisterly relationship where we've had to learn how to be so open and so honest yes. with each other to a degree where even when it were, our personal lives are falling apart, for instance, we've had to be like, "Hey, I'm struggling here, and it's affecting me here," mm -hmm. and having us both go through that 
it was almost like I had somebody on my team in a very solitary moment to help build me up and give me hope. And hope is, I think, the most powerful thing ever. And I also think manifestation and taking yeah. the proper actions to make it happen, like it's more than just belief. And I think that's what makes people succeed. Mm -hmm. Talk about the design process and actually how these get made. Because I went to your site, I'm not a great fashion mind, <laughs> right? But I looked at it and it was really cool visually. I liked, like especially the hoodies and what they look like, graphics, you know, on the back and stuff. Thank you. Like how, do you have a background in that? And no. how did you, be that become so, your thing? She doesn't have a background, but I do want to say she is the most creative person I know and has oh, wow. always been. And even though she'll never admit it, she always says I'm not a good writer, but she is. So the way that her mind works Thank is you. crazy to me. So I'm, <laughs> you can explain now how you got into it, but it's so just I'm not a mental patient, me, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, when I was working uh, for my dad, I, I started in dental and in my first part of my career with um, Keystone, I actually was photoshopping teeth um, for a catalog. So I was photoshopping dentures. So I kind of like had this like bare minimum knowledge of Photoshop. So I was like, okay, um, I can somewhat run with this. And then all of a sudden, um, when I did the small design for the one hoodie and whatnot, I was like, okay, well, what else can I learn? And I'm like, mm, I'm just gonna go on YouTube and kind of check it out. And since then I've just kind of adapted everything from what YouTube's been able to teach me. And I definitely don't design to like the design school manner of things. Like RISD probably gave a much more proper layout for the way things are supposed to be done. Um, but I do the best that I can and that's all I can say. And at the end of the day, that's all I can be proud of. What I've noticed a lot um, about your designs from when we first started to now, I think it also is like the season of your life that you're in. So even the first two pieces of merch, one was like super deep and it had like this really important quote on the back that had to do with like self empowerment and knowing when it's right to walk away and still loving yourself oh, in wow. the end. And message. the other one was more like an F you type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, like it said, what are you going to do without him on the front and on the back? It said, whatever I want. So there was two very like different types of variations. I variations. feel like of both of our personalities. What sells better? The positive ones or the negative? You ones. I think they both. Both do the, they I, both do the yeah, same. They go, yeah, yeah it's, we have this one um, design that we created together. That's called that. I, mean, I hope I, you. Yeah, I hope you. And um, we had an ex colleague that kind of left on a bad note. We're on good terms now. We but, told him this, by the way. Yeah. So if you are watching. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're having a good laugh. Um, but we were thinking of like, like we would never wish ill will upon anybody. But we were like. Damn. Not even on an X? But no, we're like, yeah. I hope that he uh, just gets a parking ticket this morning. Like, <laughs> And like, I hope that he gets his car washed and it rains tomorrow and ruins the car. Or... I hope he gets sick in a Michelin star restaurant. <laughs> yeah, like, just like, we, and we were on text just going back and forth, beating each other these lines that were so funny. And really, so then I just took that this... and I was like, let's just throw it on a t-shirt. So Whatever. the whole t-shirt is a back of just like, I hope you, I hope you this. And then the back of the last line is, um, I hope you're happy. Yeah. Just to kind of be like, it's the, the top off to all of the ill will things that we were wishing upon the person. But so, what advice do you have for? I'm sure one of your younger followers watching this and go, "I want to do what they're doing. I want to create my own fashion brand. I have limited budget. I don't have a lot of money. I could produce, just like you said in the beginning, hundred shirts, twenty hoodies, whatever. How do they sell their first twenty hoodies or sell their first hundred t-shirts? It seems like an impossible thing. I think. For us, we were lucky to have and still have mentors to help with the inside and the outside. I think the biggest thing, no matter what, is not giving up and making sure that even when people are putting you down, even the people that are supposed to be helping you, that you still push forward through that. So if you can push forward through that and succeed, I think that's the strongest thing you could possibly mm -hmm. do. But how you stay relevant is essentially making sure that that back end, your expenses, your cash flow, like all those things are really taken care of and really put down the line and where can you mix and match different money and like make sure like, okay, I didn't spend this much on a photo shoot, so I'm gonna use that money towards this. It's really important, I think, to have the back end super clean um, to make the front end look really nice. And I think relevance comes with that. Yeah, I also think it's really important to when you are starting your business to know why, why is someone going to buy this from you? Like, why is somebody going to buy this t-shirt versus get a t-shirt from Old Navy or Gap? And what is the reasoning behind that? And for us, we have such strong brand DNA in the sense that 
you know, everybody has a heartbreak story. You and, have a voice as right. a brand. And so you're wearing your heart on your sleeve, people essentially. People can relate. Yeah. So um, just knowing if you put yourself outside your business and just put yourself in the mind of, the, of your target consumer, why would that person buy it? I think it's really weird, too, because it almost doesn't feel like consumers a good word or audience is a good word because really for us it's like a community of people who are learning mm -hmm. how to heal mm -hmm. and attaching ourselves to that has been a huge part of our success and I think also staying consistent with the conversation as well with that audience I mean some days we're just therapists they're not yeah. here to shop <laughs> yeah yeah um but it's really important I think to the both of us and having that consistency between both the back end and the front end what are some early mistakes you made that you want to share with the aspiring entrepreneur, the new entrepreneur to say, hey, like this is what I did, and this not a good idea to go down that path. Anything, I mean. There's, well, there's a lot. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a good example. Yeah. Don't hire friends. Yeah. Don't hire oh, friends really? of friends, yeah. I would say. Um, and it's funny. It gets, well, besides obviously our situation, but it gets, it gets personal at the end of the day, and you can't sit there and in the beginning think it won't be that way, because it always will. Yeah. Um, also, it's really, really hard to, find people who are actually trustworthy because everybody's going to say, I can do this. I can also do that. Yeah, yeah. I can help you here, here and here. And you don't want to just immediately right off the bat, not trust the person. Um, I think you have to though. You have to, but you have to make sure that if you start seeing anything, like any type of red flag, which we've been through and we've started seeing like one or two, you have to, you have to really follow your gut instinct I think there. it's, yeah, I think it's an intuitive feeling where it's like if a person even remotely, even if they're asking something in a certain way is giving you like a, ugh, I got the ick from that. Like, <laughs> it's, there's a reason, again. there's yeah. a reason why your hair is on the back of your neck or standing up. Like, there's a reason why you got the ick. Like, there's no such thing as coincidences. I truly don't believe I, that. Yeah, I and I think there's a reason why you're given emotions to have these feelings, even when you don't understand what they mean. Go with your gut. Yeah. Yeah. And when you are, if you are, and when you are screwed over by somebody that you did trust, like it's going to happen. It's okay. You learn, a, you do, you learn a huge lesson from that. And sometimes it's even harder after that, after that happens because you build up this wall that you don't want to have the wall go all the way up, but you, I don't know, it, it gets to, it becomes a mind game almost too, where you have, that's, when we go off each other, if she gets a bad feeling about something, then it's in the back of my mind and I keep an eye out for that or vice versa. So I think you have to have people around you that you trust too. Yeah, I think it's difficult. It's I had somebody who worked for us for three years and I thought that they were super trustworthy. They had a lot of instances where they'd miss out on work and I was getting really frustrated and they'd put really personal like situations on kind of our shoulders. And it, it got to a point where I was like, look, like, I can't take this anymore. I'm losing it a little bit. I need you to take out like your PTO hours if you're gonna take off this much work. And she was really upset by that. And it was super off-putting. She ended up quitting, getting out of Boys Lie, and we start looking at her credit uh, card statements yeah. and find out she stole tens of thousands of dollars no. from us. And the case is still ongoing, so I don't really know how much detail yeah, we of can course. get into it. But it just goes to show sometimes the people you want to trust the most, the most, who you want to have the most heart for, who you want to be the most empathetic for. Yeah. They really don't have your single handed best interest at heart. And no. people are really good at making you feel really making bad. Making you feel like it's your fault and also making you feel like you're doing something wrong when they're just manipulating you into feeling that way. Yeah, so. that was a really hard one. Yeah, I think just not trusting. Like they always say, trust but verify. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that's, that's the advice. best way to put it. Yeah. I think that that definitely is. Like it. you don't want to be jaded and closed off. Yeah, but like if they're telling me they're they're really good at Photoshop and this and that and doing all these projects, give me the number from someone you did a project. Yeah, for, right? or I, I just want to see. Even just checking in, like being like, oh, okay, you're taking care of it. Just wanted to follow up. Like, what's that look like? Can you show it to me just on the screen? And I think that's the other thing is making sure that you're constantly checking in. Yeah. And honestly, nothing's ever going to be perfect. Hopefully that never happens to us again, but you never know. And it's very common. It I think happens the all the time. Best thing, actually best advice is not to make the same mistake twice. Mm -hmm. Because so you're going to make mistakes. Yeah, don't continue to do the same thing and expect 
a different outcome from it. Yeah. Like change, change yeah. something. If it's not working, if you did something wrong, make sure you don't do it again. Yeah, if you do the keep doing the same thing over and over, it's don't expect different results. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fair. I think you. that's the biggest thing. I want to ask you one more thing about pivoting too, because I see this a lot. You did it right, and it sounds like you did it at the tail end. Like we got to do something. Like we're out of money. <laughs> we're kind of forced to do something, yeah. right? But you did it before it was too late. I think I, I see a lot of founders who have such a belief and such a passion and through self-will are gonna make it work. And for some reason, it's just, they're not finding the right audience, it's not the right product at the right time, it's not solving a problem, you know, whatever thing it's, you know, reason it's not succeeding, but they never can get that focus off the, the path and they don't pivot in time and they suffer because of it. How, do you have any advice? I mean, do you just have to be self-aware or look at data or how do you? I think again, not making the same mistake twice, like and being aware of your mistakes and saying, okay, this really didn't work. This is something new. I can, I have a couple new things I can try. What if this play is made is gonna be my consequences? What is gonna be my outcome? And I think giving yourself those options and knowing that there are always options and you do have choices, that's really important and not to sink your heart into one thing. Be open-minded. Yeah, I also feel like the majority of entrepreneurs put so much pressure on themselves. So mm -hmm. if one thing doesn't work, like, well, I can make this work and all that pressure into making something perfect is never gonna work. So when we pivoted, we were kind of at this point where we're just like, let's try. I don't even know, we've never done this before. Let's see yeah. if it works. Even so with our PR team at the time, we were, they were strictly makeup and we were, we were like, we have no money left. You guys are gonna have to give us like, either you quit out on us now or you're gonna be a part of this pivot and give us maybe like two months of a break. Mm -hmm. And we were super open and honest with them about where we were and where we stood. And we were lucky we had such a good small PR team that we still work with today. And they were like, you know what? Like, we can make this work, we'll figure it out. Yeah. And we yeah. did. Yeah. The importance of having a good team around you. Yeah, it's important you don't do to it surround by yourself. yourself with the right people. Yeah. And go, even going back to what we were talking about at the beginning, the people that didn't support you <laughs> when you first started, it's funny because once you do succeed, they always come back and now they're your sudden, biggest cheerleader. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can I love this hoodie? Can you send it to me? Yeah. And you never forget the people that really didn't believe in you, and yeah. now all of a sudden, you know, want something from you. I'm like here's a discount you, code. You, yeah, yeah, you don't send it, it to them for free, right? <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Sometimes, honestly, we sometimes do just like you know what? Keep Here the peace. You go. Yeah, keep the peace. Yeah. Well, very nice. Well, this was a great conversation because kind of the public face of you was very different than this conversation and seeing how plugged in you are to the business. Because you never know when you see these kind of companies, you know, with the face, you know, are they really checked in? Did they just write a check to start this business and they're in Cabo during the week? Like, you know, sipping a drink somewhere, Oh, right? that sounds lovely. Or are they really doing data entry at yeah. two in the morning? You know, yeah. so it's, it's good to see the hustle, you know, behind the scenes of how you got here. So I think it's a great message to really anyone trying to start a business or grow a business. Thank you. Thank and congratulations you know. on your success yeah. too. It's yeah, been thanks. amazing to see all the people that you've interviewed. We're really lucky. Yeah, well, I, was, happy I was on your show you like all night looking at all the interviews. I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. I don't know. It's just like you said before, it, it took me 40 years to realize what I'm good at. Yeah. You know, I'm the quickest learner, but the only thing I'm good at is talking with people. <laughs> I can't hang a picture frame. <laughs> You know, I don't watch football. I can't name a football player, but yeah. yet I can name every single Real Housewife. Yeah. So I'm right there I don't, with you. maybe that's a good skill to have. Yeah. I don't know. No, but, it is. But you folk, you've try, you've try to find. I believe everybody has a superpower mm -hmm. of some kind. Now you may be LeBron James at 16, where you know damn well what your superpower is, and so does yeah. everyone who watches you. Yeah. But other people shouldn't be discouraged, you know, because they haven't figured it out by 20 or you know, by 30 or whatever. Even by 40, it's okay to not know. Yeah, It's, it's okay. okay to, like, as long as you're healthy and surviving, it's Paying okay. your bills yeah. and, yeah. Finding balance somewhere, mm -hmm. like, it's okay to not know. And you can do this stuff as a side hustle. Yeah. yeah. That's how you started, right? Yeah. It was yeah. as a side hustle. Well, right? yeah, but we were, yeah, trying to make it our main. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. always the we goal. Had we had yeah. choice. Yeah, we had yeah. no choice, but. Yeah. Um, it's not easy, but I do feel like everyone will be able to find it. It's just about figuring out what's best for you. And, and you, like you said, you realize that you're great at talking to people, so you made a career out of it. Yeah, why not? 
And that's cool. <laughs> well, you guys are pretty cool. So <laughs> thank you so much for sitting down with me. Guys, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. We do new interviews every Tuesday with the biggest entrepreneurs in the world. And they give you inspiration like we got from these ladies today, but they also give you real business tips on how to start or grow your existing business. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Thank you. Thank you.